So we had met on the very first Fort Collins vision trip plant uh, for the church that we wanted to plant called City Light Fort Collins. And uh, she was coming from Omaha, I was coming from Lincoln. And really when that whole thing went down, it was really neat because uh, I was working for a church in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I'm on staff. I'm considering this move out to Fort Collins, Colorado. And I'm like, man, like that's a long time away. Like if I say yes to this, I'm probably not gonna date anyone anytime soon. Like I'm probably pushing that to the side. Um, and I had got to a point where I was like, okay, God, it's just gonna be me, you, and the dog. Like I bought a house. I was like, this is my five-year commitment to Omaha. I had like wanted to move out to Colorado and just got to a point in my singleness where I didn't know if the Lord was gonna provide a spouse. So it's really cool just to see God's faithfulness to just provide. Um, a spouse, but also just provide a friend. And uh, it's just fitting that on my very first trip out here, I would meet Rachel. Mm -hmm. So we're at this church in Fort Collins that's just was allowing us to like use their building on a Saturday. And I'm greeting people, I'm getting people excited. And I meet this guy and he's waiting for his wife to come because his wife's bringing coffee. And I'm like, oh dude, go in, don't worry. Like I'll, I'll look for her, I'll send her right in. Uh, to come find you and uh, a couple minutes later uh, Rachel shows up and I swear she had two cups of coffee in her hand and so I introduced myself and said hey I, I met your husband inside he's a really cool guy I can't wait to meet you and she looked at me kind of like confused I was like, like what I don't have a I husband. don't have a husband and I'm like wow this is a very awkward conversation <laughs> right now and I'm like okay great and I'm just like well see you later and like introduce my, myself to the next person and I'm like, man, she was really cool. She seems really neat. And so when I went inside, I started to kind of put myself around her and started to build a conversation with her. And then we went out to lunch and then went on a prayer walk on campus. Mm -hmm. I feel like the Lord just put it, really put college ministry in my heart for the first time ever. And cause I just have really been wanting a ministry and I didn't know anybody that was going to the vision trip. And mm -hmm. then I heard that he was going to a brewery yeah, so she overheard friends. that me and my buddy Jeremy were uh, gonna go to a brewery in New Belgium, and she kind of like inserted herself in the conversation, like, I love beer too. I'm like, oh, <laughs> really? Okay, well, come join us. And so we went to New Belgium, and we had a couple of drinks, and uh, we just started talking. But we found out that we love hiking, and uh, Jeremy and I were going hiking the next day, and, and Rachel I was thought, planning on going to hike with mm -hmm. my dog, and I was like, well, if you guys wanna go together, like, let me know. And so we hike, and it was freezing, and mm -hmm. then we head back down to Estes, I'm really interested in Mike. I want this guy's number. So I intentionally had him take a picture on his phone. And yep. then on the drive home, I was like, oh, can you send me those pictures, Mike? Yep. And so then I got his number. A week later, I called Rachel and she didn't pick up. So I left her a voicemail. But anyway, she calls me back and uh, we find out that uh, uh, another couple that are friends of ours are having a diaper kick, mm -hmm. which I didn't know existed, but it's where you celebrate the birth of a child by bringing diapers and they provide a cake. And so we decide, hey, like that's up in Omaha, I have to come up there anyway, why don't we just do a day date? And so I came up early, we had coffee, we had breakfast together, I believe. Um, and after that, we, we went to the diaper keg and hung out and watched the Husker football game together. And I just got to hang out with mutual friends. I think it was after like that first day, I'm like, wow, like this girl is so genuine. She just has an authentic love for the Lord. Um, she also has a desire to, to help in some fashion or form in college ministry. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, those, those are the three things that I'm really looking for. Um, so I really knew like after that moment, I'm like, I just enjoy being around this person. She's a better hiker than me. She's a better biker than me. She's better looking than me. I'm like, that's, those are the big three right there. I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of all in right now at that point. <laughs> And I think interest was just kind of building since we mm -hmm. met for me. And I was like, wow, like the, it, you were just turned out to be like the gift I never knew if the Lord was gonna provide. Mm -hmm. The pandemic, even though it was really tough and difficult, we just had, I felt like a lot more free time to be able to mm -hmm. devote to each other yeah. and grow um, even through uncertain times. It was a fun season. Back in May of last year, Jason and Annie, Mike's really good friends and now my friends, um, we start planning this trip to Estes in September to celebrate their like 10th year of dating. A part of me was like, could this be it? But I feel like everybody did a good job throwing me yeah. off. Like Jason, we went on a long bike ride and he was like, no, like Mike hasn't even told me when he's gonna propose. Like I'm pretty sure we he lied a lot. Blue. It was amazing. I like didn't even paint my nails. I didn't think it was gonna happen that weekend. Mm -hmm. And so we went to Estes and 
beautiful day. Like, mm-hmm. bluebird skies. Like, you couldn't even tell there was wildfires. And so Mike is, like, booking it up the hike. Not really talking a lot. I didn't think anything of it. He was, like, way ahead of us. Yeah, I was, I was like, getting sick to my stomach because I was nervous. I'm thinking, like, okay, did I actually get ring insurance? Like, I don't even know. Am I going to drop it? Like, am I going to drop it? Am I going to lose it? Like, this is on top of a mountain. It was such a funny moment because uh, we're like, hey, can you get a photo of Rachel and me? And our, our friend Jason is a professional photographer, and so it was just kind of expected. Jason's like, oh, let me whip my, out my camera. Like, this will be great. And so he does that, he gets a couple photos, and I'm like, hey, Rachel, I have a question to ask you. And I didn't hear him, so I was like, oh, Jason, can you take some pictures on my phone? And, and so I'm sitting there, I'm like, <laughs> I, what? Uh, and so I ask again. <laughs> Um, and so it was just funny. I mean, we just have such a, a humorous relationship and there's like these little things that happen, like the wind's blowing and she can't hear me or I can't hear her. And um, so it was just fitting that that would happen in that moment. But it was really cool just to um, not just like get down on one knee and propose, but to actually like share with her like how much I've enjoyed just getting to do life and um, as friends. But um, also now I, I'd like to do that as a husband and you as my wife. And it was just such a a special moment to, to share that um, with our friends as well too. And so then proposal happens and we hike down and then we go to this like really nice restaurant. My parents were there and my aunt was there, mm-hmm. which like what I wasn't expecting at all, but really fun to be able to celebrate with them too. You know, we might not be like the perfect people for each other, the perfect soulmates for each other, but we choose to be uh, a person that loves each other, respects each other uh, and runs towards forgiveness. Um, and for towards Jesus. Too. Oh yeah, like yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Rachel Ann, before I commit these vows to you, I want you to know that in becoming my bride today, you are demonstrating to me the goodness, faithfulness, and greatness of our Heavenly Father. And that's not because you're perfect, even though I think you are. It's not because you're sinless, or even that I'm marrying up, and I definitely (laughs) am. Rather, it's because you're God's daughter. A daughter who knows His love, who follows His voice, and runs to embrace him when things are tough. But even more, you are a daughter who has given her life to Christ and to the things of Christ. And Rachel, there is not a greater gift that I could ever receive in my life than that. Michael James, I take you to be my husband and fully embrace the calling and privilege of being your wife. I vow to be loving, faithful, and tender on the days when it's hard and on the days when it's easy. I vow to be honest and vulnerable with you, fully embracing emotional oneness. I vow to trust you and honor you, living in submission to your leadership. And so the vow I want to make to you is a simple one, but really difficult. 
It's to daily love you just as Christ has loved the church and gave himself up for her. As your husband, today, I'm called to do the same. I vow to serve you out of sacrificial and selfless love as we have been sacrificed for and loved by a perfect and holy God. I vow to keep short accounts, being quick to forgive and quick to receive your forgiveness. I want you to know that this call to love you isn't just to make us happy, but more so it's to make me holy. It is not a love rooted in emotions, but one that runs towards faithfulness and honesty and respect, forgiveness and sacrifice. I vow to use my words to build you up, to encourage you, to affirm you, and to speak light and truth. I vow to keep God at the center of my life, our home, and our marriage. I vow to pursue you in grace and in love in moments of brokenness and failure. I vow to stand by your side in seasons of health and sickness, in seasons of abundance and scarcity, and in seasons of strength and weakness. It is a love focused on pursuing you, leading you, encouraging you, and serving you. It is a love committed to unity, understanding, and a humbleness to admit sin, weakness, and failure, even when I don't want to. But most importantly, Rachel, it is a love that daily admits to myself, to you, and to God, that on my own, I am unable to love you in these ways without God's rescuing and redeeming grace in my life. And that's where I stand. I vow to be used by God for our sanctification, every day striving together to look more like Christ. I vow all of these things so that we may serve the Lord and others as long as he breathes life into us. And so my vow to you is to love you, uphold this call to love you in these ways, resting not in myself or my ability, but rather resting in the love and sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Well, since you guys have entered into the covenant of marriage, I now declare you to be husband and wife, and what God has joined together, let no man separate. And Mike, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> <laughs>